Good afternoon and welcome to this dialogue with author and speaker Stephen Harrison. Um, Stephen's lifelong passion has been the curiosity about the human potential and exploring it within the context of what are we truly are, what we truly are as human beings, and how do we embody this in a rather conflicted, fragmented world. So um, in this dialogue, we hope to explore what we've just done by way of a workshop, to reflect on it, and see what emerges out of that in terms of further themes and explorations. So Stephen, what's your reflection on the workshop that you've just done? How did what was your sense of it? Well, in that, in that workshop, we attempted to construct a kind of experiment in the space itself, which is to say, I, as the speaker, uh, attempted to deconstruct myself in that role and to open up the space, much like a teacher might in a classroom, to try to evoke a more inclusive um, participation. and. Uh, there, were, there was some noticeable resistance to that, both uh, in the inv invite to uh, move the chairs around in the space, which sort of became half a circle and half of an auditorium setting, and it just got stuck there. Like, it couldn't really become an inclusive space, and it couldn't really become a lecture space. But I also noticed a kind of resistance both in myself and in the participants in not going deeper than the academic structure that we were, we were all in. And uh, this was interesting to me, that even in a, a, a space where the design of it was to go as deep as possible, there was a self-limitation to that. So you're saying that, um, and this was um, observable, that um, we, you, are, you invited us to look into the space look into our roles there and to deconstruct it, um, configure it in any way we, we wanted to. Um, but it became, I suppose, to just define the word academic, academic in the sense of um, many of the teachers in the room talking about, so how do I make this contact with my students, my learners? Um, and I think you're suggesting that may also, while it's a, a, a very useful inquiry, it could also be a deflection from myself as the learner in that room. Sure, because the real question is, who am I? Yes. Because I'm the one that's the actor. I'm the one that has constructed the reality that I'm relating to. So if I'm the teacher, I'm constructing this group of so-called students. Or if I'm the student, I'm constructing this, this authority figure teacher. And in that engagement, we're really just engaging this kind of artificial reality. The, the, the actuality is that we're human beings, and we haven't really discovered what that is. And without discovering what that is, we don't really know how to act, how to move. And so that question of can we, in each and every classroom, actually in each and every circumstance, including this one, can we actually engage the question of who am I? What is it that, that drives me? What is it that that makes me uh, animated and that, that makes me act. The question, wh who am I, is, um, brings about great resistance in academia. We may study it in, in, in a philosophy class, but even there the uh, conceptions that may arise, uh, arise within that conceptual world mm -hmm. of describing the question in some way. I, I, I doubt it's ever really taken right into myself. Yeah. Um, so, it, but beyond the philosophy class or the class in, in religion, um, it's almost regarded as a frivolous question. Hmm. You know, it, 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 it's something that is perhaps characterized as um, new agey or um, uh, sentimental and subjective. I've seen um, uh, academics um, actually decry um, PhD students who engage in that kind of question for mm. their PhD studies as that, not, as that not really being true scholarship, mm -hmm. true research. So there's a, a lot of this resistance um, 
But you're coming into the space and saying, um, it's only if we engage with the question, not necessarily get a, an answer by way of finality, can there be um, a true engagement with learning, deep learning, uh, an engagement with, with a deep movement of creativity. Yeah. Um, so my observation is that um, there were people in the workshop today that were engaging the notion at least that we can engage our learners yeah. by, through this, this question. But sometimes it still it, it, it collapses into the functional. You know, I want to do this in order for my students to be good students so that they can pass their exams. You know, that's, so we want to get something um, out of it by way of a quantifiable outcome. <laughs> you know, but, but what you, you're pointing to is um, something far, far deeper. It's who am I as a human being? And where in myself do I find this, um, if it does exist, this tremendous place of connection uh, and, uh, and not disconnection? Yeah. And so um, it strikes me that while as academics we may talk about wanting uh, um, well-rounded students, we want students that are holistic, etc. cetera, um, we actually don't want to go to that question. Yeah. There's a deep resistance to that. Yeah, because uh, when we ask the question of how do we learn and consequently how do we teach, we have to understand our uh, relationship to knowing. And what is the relationship to knowing something? Is it that I create a thought structure which then captures the dynamic of life into a static entity which I then know and gives me a kind of sense of of safety and security, even though it's essentially an ideology? Or is there a kind of knowing which is not uh, related to uh, keeping something fixed? And so this question of, of how we construct knowledge, how we relate to the thoughts which arise in the field of our awareness, seems to me to be more fundamental than uh, the the question of uh, teaching and learning itself. It, it reminds me of the, um, of the Hindu tradition, where we have the word Vedanta, which means the end of knowledge. Of course, that has been um, romanticized now. Um, very often um, assume that we've got to master a body of knowledge, and then you are spiritually enlightened. Um, but I think it was um, Krishnamurti who pointed, it out, pointed this out to some scholar that actually it means uh, the end of knowledge, mm. willing to put that aside to enter into, into this very dynamic uh, movement of unknowing. And, and perhaps it's a, a, a movement of unknowing and knowing arising um, in, a, in, a, in a dynamic, creative way, um, over which we have no control really, but it's very, very threatening and, 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 and uh, terrifying, yeah. especially for um, a production system, which is the academy, hmm. where everything has got to be known. And even in the sciences, you, you find there's great resistances to new knowledge, yeah. um, and, and they have immense turf wars. Yes. It can last decades. Well, this resistance to new knowledge is exactly the, the challenge because when I know something, then there's security in that. Yes. Now, how, how do I become available to something which is new? Yes. How do I become available to something which is unknown? So this is the resistance to creativity. To create is to move into something which is unknown. And, of course, this generates a kind of fear. Yet this is the thing that, that animates you know, a human life. If you take away creativity, if you take away the movement from the known to the unknown, you really take away the human, the human life. And so the question of how to teach and learn in that environment becomes one of 
how do you enter into the unknown constantly in a situation where you're being um, given the known over and over again? You're, you're asked to learn the known. So I think what we were trying to get to in this, uh, in this seminar was how to open up the space of the classroom so that it's constantly engaging in something which is new and fresh. Well, that requires the teacher to let go of being a teacher, the student to let go of being a student, because either these are just roles. These are things we know. We know how to act as a student. I know that you're in power as a teacher. I know what to do in order to get the grade, to get the certificate. As a teacher, obviously, you know what to do. We have to let go of those roles in order to actually come to a space which is unknown and which is creative. And there's resistance to that. I also think you, you're not suggesting um, that we have to arrive at some, some kind of ideal learning configuration, just in terms of, say, the, the classroom setting. Um, you could still have um, a very conventional structure, but it's what the, the teacher is actually carrying uh, in herself, which, which may infect the learners. Mm -hmm. which, uh, because otherwise, it's like, well, I'll wait for this to happen. I'll wait for the universities to redesign their classrooms right. before I become a creative teacher. Right. And that's not what you're suggesting. No. You're saying, you've, you've got, we've got to do this now. We've got to transform now, and let's see what comes out of that. Sure. And it's just by injecting the, the, the quality of curiosity into the space itself, into whatever the structure is, whatever the curriculum, whatever the subject matter is, if there's actual and authentic curiosity, that curiosity will uh, permeate the space itself. As we looked at in this, this seminar space, how does the configuration of the chairs in a space, you know, how does that um, inform those who inhabit that space what the structure of the space is? That's a kind of learning. If we have it set up auditorium style, I'm the speaker, the, those sitting in the chairs are the consumers, that informs us. That's the learning that takes place. If you make that into a circle, that's different. And one of the challenges was individuals said, well, what about these classes of two or 300 people? Yes. Well, that's the question for the class. This is the curiosity. How can we structure or restructure the architecture of the classroom so that it actually facilitates the curiosity and the creativity that we know we need as human beings? Yeah. What I did find uh, of interest um, is that uh, you are facing largely, I think, uh, un you know, wholly uh, an academic audience. Um, and unlike other kinds of seminars, uh, academic seminars, where we uh, receive the knowledge and then apply it to some theory that uh, that characterizes that knowledge, or you know, it's like what so and so said, uh, you know, and he's. He's got an opposing theory, and you know, yeah. all of that kind of conceptual um, description was largely absent. Mm -hmm. You know, it was there in a, in a, a minor form, uh, but I find that interesting simply because of the way you engaged um, with the group. Um, so uh, it's about going bypassing, uh, in a sense, the intellectual mind, not making it. Uh, redundant sure you know um, and yes there could still be resi resistances but I did I did find it very interesting that um, the space was not overwhelmed I mean it, I, I'm almost certain if you we went to another kind of seminar um, especially an academic one you know people are, are filtering everything that is being said through a multitude of theoretical ideas mm -hmm. right and there's even no real contact with the issue, whatever yeah. it might be, yeah. you know, uh, academics are, as academics, we are noted for that kind of discourse. Right. Um, and so there was something, though, even though there may have been resistance, there was an engagement um, with this, uh, uh, in that space beyond uh, concept. Uh, not maybe perhaps not totally, yeah. but I, to use your word at a, at a sensitive, sensitive uh, level. Mm -hmm. um, so that 
takes me to another point which we, hasn't come up yet in our um, uh, dialogues that we've had, and this is the second, the workshop was the second one, and that is um, there is a good reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a good reason to, to, to um, put attention to the, uh, to the sensate, uh, because we've, we are overlooking all the time that this reality that has been constructed is exactly that. Mm. It is arising out of sensation. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Um, we are engaging with this reality as if it is um, discrete and separate from my, myself. And you're over there and you're a separate body and I'm a separate body over here and separate, you know. Yeah. But we're only really encountering this through our through our sensations, yeah. and you are directing us back to that. And it looks as, uh, I mean, it's, it's very evident that our education has not prepared us for that. It's prepared us for a, through a paradigm of describing the world that's very different to what you're pointing out. To. Yeah, look at what we're even doing now. Okay, we're, you and I are talking, and we're using you know, concepts and words, and we're conveying something. But what's the something we're conveying? This is actually being conveyed through a medium that's outside of time and space. We're talking to people who um, don't exist at this moment. They will exist when they hear these words and see this video, because this is a video. This is a, con a conceptual structure. And that, that movement um, doesn't allow us to give it the kind of solidity that we would have if we just said, okay, there are people sitting in this room right now, right? So we're already in a, a space where we have to challenge how we think about what we're doing. Yes. And it's, a, it's an ongoing and constant challenge. Yeah. Uh, we have this, this, this mental model of, uh, and it's, it's so embedded in, in, in the spiritual search of, of finality, one day I'm going to get it, yeah. and, and everything is going to be resolved, and yes. uh, I'm going to be absolutely peaceful, and uh, you know the whole of life is going to bow at my feet uh, because of that attainment. Uh, that's uh, um, a strong uh, meme in, 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 in all of the world's uh, spiritual traditions, yeah. and. Um, you're actually pointing out something very, very different. Uh, that there is no finality. Um, the, the, but, but the wonder and the immense aliveness is in that vulnerability, uh, in, in meeting hmm. um, what's arising. Yeah, if we can, if we can not allow ourselves to become disconnected from the actual. So. Here we are. What's the actual here? You and I are engaged in a dialogue. We're being filmed. This is being broadcast in some future space. So are we talking to the future? Are we talking to the present? Are neither one of those existent? Are the people that are in this space with us, are they part of this conversation? Are they disconnected? So this is the question to me, is who am I and what am I expressing? The question that, um, within the context of this conference on, on, on teaching and learning, given the various fractures that we are now experiencing, mm -hmm. economically, educationally, and of course what's happening currently in South Africa, um, is there um, an immediate way in which we can make contact with the actual, with the actual, and? Um, what you're saying, it's, there, there's no method. There, there, everyone has the potential to do it now. It's, it's simply our resistance um, um, and our uh, well, but That's, that's yeah. the actual. The resistance yeah. is the actual. So this resistance to movement or change or creativity or what's next or what's new, that resistance is what is actual. 
So this is when we ask the question of what, what shall we do, or what could happen with education. We have to look at the resistance because there's nothing in the way of uh, the educational system mutating, transforming instantly. The, the resources are there, and it's not economic resources, it's human resources. And as we talked about in the seminar, uh, one of the resources that's really, really being disregarded are the students themselves. You know, if you take the student body and you allow the curiosity of the student to actually direct the education of that student, you'll find a very different occurrence taking place. What's taking place now is the curiosity of the student is being directed through a pre-formatted curriculum in order to get a certificate. So this has nothing to do with learning. This has to do with a kind of um, restructuring of, of the mind. And what you get out of that is not an engaged citizen in a uh, creative society. You get uh, individuals who have um, capitulated in order to get by. So that transformation is totally available because you have human beings who have innate curiosity. Every human being has innate curiosity. So Stephen, one of the participants um, was kind of um, bringing about an objection to um, what you were proposing, that you know, students want a certificate. They are going to be really upset with teachers that want to engage in this self-reflection and this deep learning and you know all of that and they're simply going to get the teacher fired or you know um, become disengaged but if we use the actual uh, seminar itself as a model um, there were very few that actually um, left mm -hmm. and showed uh, disinterest there was even though it may not have gone um, way down in terms of uh, the experiment of really, really deep learning mm -hmm. uh, and touching something that really explodes into something new, there was a curiosity generated. And um, so that demonstrates that someone who carries this curiosity, somehow um, the field um, that we all um, are embedded in um, holds that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're saying, that if we just took, um, took the risk of bringing this into whatever space it is, no yeah. matter how it is configured yeah. architecturally. Well, see, this, okay, this goes to the question of what the individual is. This gets a little esoteric, but, you know, the, 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 the arising of thought, which has with it the intended idea that, uh, that there's a me, that thought arising arises in a field of awareness or consciousness, if you will. So <clears throat> that field of awareness is something that we all share. That's our human connection to each other. We're all conscious. We don't have to do anything to be conscious. We simply are conscious. And so when that um, group of people became conscious of the fact that the space was, in fact, a kind of classroom, and the invitation was there for that classroom to mutate, and to become creative and alive. And some of the so-called students in that room then came and I offered the microphone and one of the students became the teacher, I became the student. People started to move around in terms of their identity, if you will. Well, that's, that's the arising of form out of the field of consciousness. Once the, the room felt connected to each other, that connection was felt then there was the possibility of something new arising because basically that was what the result of that connection was. So the suggestion really is in every classroom and every school is start with the connection. Start with the human potential. Start with the, the, the question of who are you? What is your heart desire? What is it that you came into this life to express? Make that the connecting point, and then let the classrooms mutate to reflect that, that system desires. This, this reminds me, Stephen, of something that um, you wrote um, in your book, The Question to Life's Answers. 
you said we have a, a choice between thought, me, and awareness, us. It's the same mm -hmm. uh, sense that you just conveyed now. Um, consciousness holds the, the particular. And I would just like to pursue this, and I hope it's not going to be too esoteric, mm. though is the question then of the choice. You know, uh, the, there's the neuroscientific um, findings now that actually we have very little choice. Mm -hmm. So if somebody encounters this um, statement by you, you know, yeah. your choice between um, thought me and awareness us and says, but actually um, it'll either happen when it happens or it won't happen because you have no choice to begin with. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to that? Well, I would, I would ask the question, where do you locate yourself? Mm -hmm. So if you locate yourself in the thought of yourself, the idea of yourself, you know, the collection of conditioning and the things that you've learned from your parents and your school, that bundle that I call me, if you locate yourself there, I, no, there's no choice at all because all that's happening is the arising of that conditioning. So it's already, you know, preset, if you will. But if you locate yourself in the field of consciousness itself, which I would call human relatedness, so now you're in a different place, and that um, space, that energy, if you will, is what is choosing. It's what is creating. We saw that very clearly in this seminar space. Once we connected to that, that field, and all of us felt that connection, then the space became creative. Without that, it would have been, well, I don't know what it would have been, because it didn't happen. But the... Um sense of or the, or the question of where one is located yeah whether i'm located here or there still implies some kind of choice that that's that's what be what it would be the retort the logical no retort. i'm not suggesting a choice there at all i'm suggesting ask yourself where are you located but just ask the question yeah am i located in a separate being that's trying to struggle with everybody else on the planet to survive is that where i am actually or am i located in an interrelated space in which I do care about you, and you do care about me, and what happens to the people in this room, in this city, in this world, are part and parcel of who I am. So that's a question to ask. It's not a choice to make, it's a question to ask. Okay, so let's, let's assume I ask this question. Yeah. I've just come to your, your, your talk, and I, I hear this for the first time, and I ask the question, where am I located? And I find that I'm located in, in this bundle of thoughts. Yeah. This sense of, of me. Yeah. Well, what's, what, a, what, what, what's observing that to be able to say that you're in that bundle? Yeah. So when, when you say, I'm in the bundle, well, yeah, you're in the bundle because you're observing it, but what's observing So you're immediately it? out of it. You're immediately out of it. Yeah. Once you see it, you're out of it. You're, you're in consciousness. You're in awareness, which is where we all are. Yeah. So all you have to do is ask that question to see that you're already located in an interconnected space. And that is a different set of questions than, with, than the assumption that I'm a separate self struggling to survive. Now the question is a very different one, which is, what is the expression of the interconnected space? How does it actually change the fabric of life? How does it change the forms that arise? How does it change how I live? Stephen, I feel in my body, <laughs> this is a good place to stop. Very good. And, um, and uh, I'd like to thank you um, for taking up our invitation to come to the University of KwaZulu-Natal and to join us in our teaching and learning conference and to um, present this, uh, to have presented the seminar um, this afternoon uh, and um, to do what other engagements you are going to be doing uh, over the course uh, of the week. So um, thank you once again. We uh, are deeply appreciative of the um, time that you've given to us uh, at a time where I think um, we most need to engage with this kind uh, of deep inquiry. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.